Uh, the one thing I was going to add to this is that when you when you make content changes on the editor and you press Control D by default, it will render your um, normally the recommended approach is to use the link mode. Uh, link mode is where you do the rendering on the PC and it uses the and it sends the the the, the, the frame the swap chain buffers to the actual device. So with the link mode, it's really easy to make a change in the editor press control G and it actually launches, the PC uses the main pipeline and your device uses the VR pipeline automatically. So it makes it a really, really easy way to update content, press control G, press escape back to editing mode, then press control G and then you, you're back in the visual, visualizing the game. So it makes it very easy to actually create content. And then once you are ready to fully okay with it, then you can use the, the whole Android workflow and creating an APK and deploying it completely on the device. Because up until then, you can just use PC to do all the development. You don't actually need to build Android assets, create an APK, deploy it on the device um, right away. You can literally just use PC assets, use uh, PC, run both uh, the PC uh, on the editor, you will use the main pipeline and the VR pipeline on the PC. So everything can just be done in PC. Yeah, using the link. Yeah, and I and also mentioned in the presentation itself, and all of these hints are already there, so you can figure out how to do it later by reading it. Um, um, you don't even need a, 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 a Quest device connected to your PC. Uh, you can customize the, the pipeline that the editor is going to use, and instead of using the main pipeline, you want to use the multi-view pipeline. And now you're going to see in, in the screen exactly how it would look on device. Um, so that's also, you know, makes life considerably easier. But interestingly, though, as I mentioned also at the end, is that even if you're running on device and you're iterating and you want to see everything on device, the iteration workflow is really fast nowadays. It's only like five seconds in between each iteration. Granted, I'm talking about the small levels. I don't know what would happen if you have you know, gigabytes of, you know, asset data and suddenly you modify a massive building. I don't know how that would look like, but at least for tinkering with the small levels, it's really fast. And you can see, can you guys see the device manager? The, um, yep. where I'm going to do a quick demo here to what, how it looks like to run on link mode. So there is a button that run here on MetaQuest link where I'm going to enable it. When you go on link mode, it's going to open the Oculus app also. Um, and then you want to, the, at the moment, the proximity sensor is a uh, disable and it shows here disable for two hours. So, I'm going to go back to the editor and I'm going to click play. And now, wait, is this? Let me make sure. Yeah, I had disabled the link mode before I started the editor. So let me start it again. Let me click play. So now look, I'm moving the headset and you cannot see what I'm seeing in there, but the scene is there. So at the moment, the scene is actually rendered three times by your desktop GPU. It's gonna be it's gonna be rendered once for the main view of the game mode editor, one for the left eye, and one for the right eye. So I'm going to put this to rest and I exit. And now we're back to the main pipeline here. Um, similarly, let's do an, an experiment of running on device. So I can leave the editor running, no problem. I'm going to go to the MetaQuest Developer Hub and I'm going to disable Quest Link Mode. So right now it is disabled. I'm going to go to Android Studio. Um, and I'm going to click run the application. So it started really fast. 
and I can go to the log tag and it's already printing content in there. Now there is a way to visualize. Let me see if I can, because I've done it in the past where I think in the performance analyzer, As you find that I can just, if somebody who doesn't know what a link mode is, link mode is essentially uh, where all the rendering and GPU processing happens on the PC. And then it just uses the device as a way to visualize the end result. Um, and that's a much easier way to do development because PC is much faster, the hardware is much better, and you don't have to, everything is done on PC and just literally okay. setting the end end result. That's the difference between link mode and then non-link mode is where you have to do everything, all the processing on the device itself, which is what Galib is showing. So here I went to the performance analyzer and it has a casting option at the bottom. So after I click play, you can see, you know, what the eyes are seeing as I move the headset around. And it shows you a lot of metrics and, and so on. So let's do an experiment quickly here. I'm gonna go back to the editor and I'm gonna add another shader ball. I'm gonna click here, duplicate. I'm gonna move it up. I save the level and I'm gonna go back to Android Studio and I'm gonna click rerun again. So it's gonna kill the app, detect the differences, up upload the new level. And it should be running now. So let's go here. So now look, you can see now in the screen, there are the two shader balls in the screen as I move the headset. So definitely we're seeing the new version of the assets of the level asset. It was very quick. Like this is as quick as, you know, testing on, on the, on the, this is actually quite itself. awesome. Yeah, this is like as is. good as link mode. Um, I actually, when I used, when I was developing this, it took forever to forever, natively yeah. create APK, push all the assets. Like I used to wait, had to wait like 10 minutes, but this yeah, is when I started much, last much year, it was almost impossible. It was, I felt yeah. like crying. So I, I yeah. fixed a lot of those things. Yeah. yeah. Good. That's the beauty awesome of open stuff. source. If you don't like awesome it, stuff. fix it. The, uh, I think this is actually faster than the workflows for other engines right now. Yes. Yes, I was talking, I went to the Games Developer Conference and I talked to some people from Meta who give support to Epic and Unity. And they were impressed when I told them about, it only takes like, you know, three to five seconds to iterate in a simple level. And they say, yeah, even a simple level in Android and Unity takes, you know, up, you know, close to a minute. So that's why and they even, they have like a dedicated simulator. So hopefully, you only deploy at the end, but with O3DE, you can basically, you know, constantly be deploying and validating that everything looks good on device. Actually, that tool that you have up, that's from Meta, um, that actually has those, those graphs are really awesome. This is all, a lot of good information here on what the GPU is doing, and you can use that to catch where the performance bottlenecks are. It's very, unlikely to see this type of data on other Android devices, but Meta has done a lot of work on tooling. So you can actually use this for, for performance uh, work um, for not just even VR, like just Android, because you can run the same level as a non-VR pipeline and you can then use this tool. That's what I've done as a hack. I would use Meta tools to then do performance for Android, just a simple Android. Network. And they'll give you all this information because it's all run Android. So, so Gallup, oh, sorry, uh, to cut you off, I uh, said, keep going. Okay. Oh, I'm done. Uh, sorry, that was, that was uh, okay. Uh, Gallup, uh, so here's what, uh, I'd like to do is to have a discussion with you, uh, and prioritize out all of the steps we need to take in order to simplify the setup process. Everything else seems really great and quick uh, and the iteration process is awesome, but the setup process is definitely complicated. There's a, there's yeah. a, even the, the simplified setup process, there's a lot of steps. Yeah. So what I would like to do is 
uh, like I said, go through, prioritize, like, well, let's automate this, let's automate that, you know, et cetera, so that it's as few clicks as possible for new users who are trying out, uh, you know, uh, XR development on O3DE to just get in and running. They're like, oh, enable the gym, it'll auto config stuff. Uh, you only have to worry about this piece when you're going to uh, distribute your app uh, and, you know, just get people in and running within a very short amount of time. Um, so, so I'll talk with you about that. Uh, we can create a prioritized list uh, and put that out, you know, either for, uh, you know, some contributors uh, to work on, you know, and we can also evangelize some of this stuff in Discord, but, uh, but I would really like us to simplify that. But everything else is just absolutely amazing. So I I, I agree that uh, if we want you know people to feel more comfortable with this, it's gotta be you know easier. Yeah. But at least you know uh, you know there is a lot of explanation of what's going on under the hood and uh, and again it's one of those things that you only have to do once. Yeah. Um, um, and and once you do it, it's uh, it's a really um, rewarding experience to yeah. say the least. Yeah, I'm also curious. Um, so Sid and I were talking about it, but uh, does this work with the installer version of O3DE or do we need to do some work to make that happen? It would only work if the installer has was generated with the OpenXR libraries or gems um, enabled. Yeah, you would you would need the gems either compiled because what, what the extra step that Galib is doing, he compiled the OpenXR and the XR jet manually. Yep. Like he cloned it and then he compiled it. So somebody would have to upload those gems, compile version, and then yes, then in theory it should work because then they just have to register it. Because okay. that's then... the simplest way to get into um, XR development of 3D is to use the installer version, turn on the gems, get up and running. 